Okay, uh, hello and welcome to part one of this series. Um, as you can probably see, um, I've removed all of the code that generated this page. I'm going to start almost completely from scratch. Um, I have left some of the styling elements in. Um, I'll explain, well, I'll go over them briefly uh, as we go through the various elements um, of the page, that is, as in, you know, tags. Um, so yeah, I suppose we better get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is sort of make the HTML code, which is going to be like the buttons and the, the bar, basically. Um, so let's go to our code, which I've got here. Um, actually, before I do this, I should probably explain the directory structure, um, which is what I usually do first. So we're working in this folder here. Um, so this test.html file is the one you saw in the browser a moment ago. Um, then we have this ext folder. Um, this, I don't know what this is short for really, external I guess, um, but I always call it this um, and this is where anything that sort of um, is used by the page goes. So inside here we have a folder for CSS, style sheets, and one for JSC, JavaScript. So we're going to be mostly working inside this JSC folder, um, but there is also a CSS file inside this CSS folder. So I'll just go into this folder first, you can see we have this main.css file, um, and this is just what contains the styles that you know um, creates the layout of the page, and the styles for the um, progress bar in this case. Um, but we won't worry too, too much about that um, for now. Um, and then we have this JSC folder, um, which is where we have our two JavaScript files. So we're actually going to be creating a sort of a library type file, um, which is going to handle the sort of logic of our progress bar. Um, and then we're going to create a main.js, which is going to be used, which is going to use the code defined in this library file to actually, you know, um, have the logic of the buttons working and the 0 to 100 thing. Okay, so now we've done that, we may as well go ahead and go too far back and get started. So let's go across to our editor, and like I said, we're going to code the HTML here just to, like, you know, design the page. So as you can see, it's a very simple starting point. Um, we've just got, like, the basic document, sort of HTML document, essentially. Um, and, we, and all I've done is create this div here called with the ID of wrap. And if we just look at our style sheet, which I've got here, you can see that the wrap div, this one, just has a margin set uh, to 100 pixels. And all this does is move the whole thing we're working with away from the edge of the browser window a little bit, so it looks a little bit neater. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. So going back to our HTML, let's add the div, which is going to be the actual progress bar. So we'll just create a new tag it's a div, it's id is going to be progress bar wrap and that's going to, that's going to be something we'll come back, come back to later um, we're going to use that from javascript and then we just need to end this tag, so there we go okay so as you probably saw a moment ago I have got some styles defined for this already so I'll just explain those briefly, so let's go back to our CSS and you can see that these styles here apply to the uh, element with the id of progress bar wrap which is what we've just defined and as, we, as you can see here, uh, we've just set its width to 300 pixels, its height to 30 pixels, and we've given it a border, which is going to be solid, it's a one pixel border, and its colour is 222, which is like a very dark grey. So, going back to the HTML, um, we can just make sure we've saved this, which we have, and we can reload our page to see what this looks like. So there you go, that's the box that essentially made up our um, the sort of outside of our progress bar. So let's go back to the code and add the buttons. So go back here and just come down a few lines. And now we're just going to add another div to contain the buttons. It's going to have the ID of buttons. There we go. Oops. And I'll explain the styles of this in a moment. So inside of here, we need a few input elements. Uh, their type is going to be button, because that's what we're looking for. Um, I'll come back to the IDs in a moment, um, and they're going to have, well, there are going to be three buttons first, 25, 50, and 75, and then a special one, which does 0 to 100. So let's set the value of this to 25%, and then just close that tag there. So let's just copy this down three times, well, two times, and change the value to 50, not 55, and 75. So now we should give these an ID so that we can assign a function to be called when they are clicked. Um, so for the first one, we're going to set the ID to set 25. You can pick pretty much anything here. 
Um, they do have to start with a letter, it can't be a number. Um, so I'm just going to give these the ID in the same or similar way. Set 50. You could do something a little bit more clever. Um, for example, you could have... Well, I'll come back to this when we get to the JavaScript, actually. So, remind me. Set 75. There we go. So our final button is going to have the same format, except this is going to say 0% to 100%. And the idea of this is going to be... Uh, let's say from 0 to 100. Why not? Okay, oh, I should say from, not form. There we go. Right, so now if we reload the page once more, we'll see these buttons. And these actual buttons have no style apl styling applied to them. Um, but if I just show you, show you the style sheet, you can see that the div with the ID of buttons here, surrounding the buttons, just has the, well, this style here applies to it. It just has the margin set so that it's 10 pixels lower than it would normally be. Um, that's just so that it looks a bit neater and there's a bit of a gap between the buttons and the progress bar. So now that we've defined our page, essentially that's all for HTML done. We don't need to worry about this style sheet anymore. Um, so I'm just going to go, go ahead and close this because we don't need it at all. Um, what we're going to do next is st uh, start creating the JavaScript. Um, and before we do that, um, we're going to write the script tags up here so that the scripts are actually included and executed on the page. So let's just add a script tag. So the script is going to have the type of text slash JavaScript and its location or source is going to be the ext folder, then the JSC folder, and then we're going to have the progress bar lib JavaScript file first. So progress bar dot lib dot js and then we need to just close that tag like that just note that these can't be sort of short closed so you can't do that it probably will work but it's invalid html which we don't like so then we just need another script tag um, for our script sorry I'm trying to <laughs> type and talk at the same time we need another script tag for our main.js. So that's the JSC slash main.js. We just need to close that as well. There we go. So I kind of rushed that. Hopefully it looks okay. Um, so now we should be able to test that these are actually being sort of included by just adding a simple alert in each one. So if we go across to our progress lib, progress bar lib, we can just add an alert that says lib. And in the main.js, we can add an alert that says main. I always do this when I create a new JavaScript file um, because sometimes if you make a typo in the name here, there's no like PHP gives you an error, it's like failed to include file. There's no none of that with the browser, um, so I usually just stick an alert in each one. So if we do that, you can see we get lib and then main. So that means that both files have basically worked, or they have been found essentially. Right. So that's uh, pretty much that. Um, uh, sorry. Right. So the next next thing we need to do is create the JavaScript to actually fill in this empty div element with the stuff that makes up our progress bar. And we're going to do that in our progress bar dot lib um, JavaScript file here. So we're just going to get rid of these alerts because obviously we don't need those. Um, and this one as well because that would be annoying to have that happen every time. And we'll come back to the main script in a moment. So what we're going to do is have our entire sort of code for the progress bar contained within a function. So we're going to create a new function here. This name is going to be progress bar. It's going to take one parameter, which is going to be the element which contains the progress bar. So this is actually going to be, in terms of HTML, this element is going to be this element here, because this is what's going to be our progress bar. It's the sort of outer box of the progress bar. If that makes any sense. So. Um, we're going to call this argument or parameter the container because it contains the progress bar. Okay, so bring that down and there we go. Okay, so within this function, we're going to define some um, sort of new variables um, to represent the actual bar, which, you know, the, the colored bit that moves across. Um, and that's going to be made up of another div, which is going to be inside the container. And then we're going to define another div again put on top of that which is going to contain the text and the reason we can't just put the text inside the main one is because it will get pushed out of the way and it'll look a bit weird so we need to apply some styling 
to the text that goes on top of the bar. So I'll explain that as we get to it. Anyway, let's just define, well, we need, first we need to create two elements. So the way we do that is by using document, I think that's spelled right, document, create, element, like so. And this takes one parameter, which is the name of the element you want to create. For example, a div tag. There we go. So that's essentially the same as having um, an actual tag on the page. So when you do that, that's what essentially the browser does. It creates an element. So that's what we've done. We've just had it done sort of more programmy with JavaScript. Um, so now let's go across to our code again, and we need to assign this to a variable because at the moment it's pretty much useless. All we're doing is wasting some of the browser's time. So we're going to create a new variable. I'm going to call this bar because it's the actual bar that moves across, and just assign it to the result of the create element function. Um, and we're going to do the almost the exact same thing for the text. So we're just going to copy that down and paste it there, and change bar to text because that's going to be the one that contains the text. Okay, so that's that done. So the next thing we need to do is um, define, well, we need to give these elements some styles so that they sort of, oops, sorry, my chair squeaking, so that they uh, sort of look a bit nicer and, well, actually work. So these aren't just for looks. Okay, so we'll start with the middle bar. Um, we need to set its width, height, and background color. So the height needs to be, well, we'll start with the width. So to set, to set the width of an element with JavaScript, you do the element, style, and then the name of the style. So in CSS, like, oh, I've closed it. I knew I shouldn't have closed it. Um, okay, well, I'll just do it. No, I, won't. I'll, I will reopen it. I was just going to write it there, but that will be very confusing. So let's just open our CSS file once more. And we want to display it. So say you want to set the width of something in CSS like this. You do width, colon, number of pixels or number of whatever um, in JavaScript you do style dot this thing the property so I will close that now because I'm pretty sure we don't need it we'll come back to that <laughs> so we want style width and then we're going to set that equal to uh, let's see I think I said 300 didn't I no I didn't we want to set it equal to zero because when we first set up the progress bar we want it to be at zero percent so zero pixels means zero percent um, then we need to set the height, so bar style height is equal to 100%. And finally the background colour, so which we can just do with background. Oh. Tap these across so it's all lined up. And we're going to set this equal to a colour code, which is going to be um, EEF, which is like a sort of very, very pale blue, sort of grey-ish colour which is the one that I used before, so you've probably seen it. Um, so after we've styled that, what we need to do is add it to the um, container. Because at the moment, um, this isn't actually on the page. All it has been done is sort of created in memory. Um, we actually need to have it added to the page so that the browser will render it, if that makes any sense. Um, the way we do that is by using the container, which is why we passed that in. So the container, just to remind you, is um, this div here. So we want to add something into the middle of this div here. So essentially when we created the element it did it in memory but it sort of created it. So imagine this is a div tag, not a dive tag. And then when you add it to the um, add it to the uh, element it actually puts it here. So it's essentially the same as having the HTML there. So the way we add it to the element is by using the add child method. Um, and we do that from the container, so container, add, no, not add, append, append child um, bar, which is the element we want to add. Okay, so that now should have added the bar to the, um, well, the container. Okay, so that is where I'm going to leave it for this part, because I think I've gone on for a bit too long. Um, so thank you for watching, and come back for part two, where we'll finish off this function and I'll start on creating the main.js code. Okay, thank you for watching, come back for part two.